Olivia. Here we are. Here we are. In I have this. Western Hotel. I'm using my Amanda Rogers on omnipotent powers to bring us here, right here, right now, in oh. this present moment. Well, I'm so glad. I'm so glad too. And I should have known because you've got that Amanda Q uh, purple. Well, yeah, look going on that there. was intentional because it gives me good luck, you see, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it's good luck on my part. I'm glad we're here. I'm, I'm glad so we're sitting glad and talking. I'm so glad to be here talking to you, and I've seen some of your other interviews that you've done with fellow oh. Turkey actors, and I feel privileged to be on the list. Uh-oh. Well, I thank you for that. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, if you saw too many of them, maybe. No, I'm kidding. No, no, no. Actually, I've just worked with a bunch of them because I've just done this science fiction comedy called Unbelievable, which is yet to be released, but oh. uh, it's kind of like a... A 50s comedy about science fiction, almost like Forbidden Planet and what have you. So, uh, okay. I, uh, my science fiction Star Trek camaraderie com continues to circulate me. And and your bona fides on that keep growing too. Who's who's in that from? Um, I, I I'm not really supposed to talk about it, but okay. probably every single Star Trek actor that you can think about okay. from all of the various series, okay. all... sixth generation. Uh, all 4,700 of them, then. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll like, be from this. way back when, from the 60s and onwards. Okay, the well, that's a clue. Yeah. That's a clue. Well, we'll look for that. Infinity and beyond. But you're here. I mean, part of this is, I was kidding earlier today, because it's like you do one spot on Star Trek, and you're in that Star Trek family forever. Well, it's, you know, it's interesting that you should say that, because it's similar to the other science fiction uh, medium that I've been... Um, fortunate enough to be part of the Clone Wars and mm -hmm. I became part of the Dirty Dozen on that which is, it was initially that Luminara role that yeah. I did was only supposed to be one episode and subsequently you know, just a relationship between myself and um, you know uh, the, the girl that I was sort of training that Luminara was was training you know, it ended, up, it ended up becoming a popular character so they brought Luminara back. With Star Wars I only did one John Delancey told me when I was there shooting that mm -hmm. one episode, True Q, he's like, you know, you know, you are going to, this is, this is, it's not over. It's <laughs> not over once this show is over. He's, this is going to continue. Right. And you are going to one day be paid lots of money to come <laughs> and Trekkies and will come and follow you. And all those little things that you're doing with your fingers, you know, those little nanu nanu things, those are going to mean something. People are going to want to know what they mean. And so... And your first reaction no was... I was like, what are you talking about, John? What drugs have you been taking recently? <laughs> but um, he was totally... I mean, I just ran into him at the uh, at the Las Vegas huge convention that they mm -hmm. had there. And it's always just so great to run into him because he's such a, an incredibly gifted man, but such an interesting human being. And yeah. he's kind of clairvoyant because everything he said happened. <laughs> So at the time, I thought he was a little bit off his trolley, but now, yeah. in hindsight, I think he was completely on the money. I, I think you probably would have found myself and another few hundred people that would have told you the same thing, but could be ready for this because you're going to be in the family for ages. Yeah. People will be sitting down with you 10 and 15 and 20 years from now to talk about these three or four or five days that you worked Absolutely. out of all the other jobs you Abs ever worked. Absolutely. I mean, it's been one of the things that people, even aside from Wonder Years and, you know, all of the things, you know, oh, order, yeah. and order and all these things that people know me from for some reason. I mean, and I understand now, uh, having seen the show not that, not, long, not that long ago, why? Because it was a really special show. And I think it's kind of cool that, that it was just the one. I think a lot, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of people have come up to me over time and said, you know, well, what if she had continued and, you know, yeah. continued to stay on the spaceship as... Um, you know, uh, being being taught by the other various characters and making that choice between good and evil and what she wants to do with her powers. But I think that that particular episode was so well written and so well directed, and I was uh, fortunate enough to work with all of the cast from the Next Generation right. in that one episode that we kind of covered it. So, so yeah, where know. do you go with Amanda from there? Well, let's let's back up and talk well, about. She, yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, she was an orphan, and I think. There was so much that 
Um, and she was clairvoyant and obviously an omnipotent. She had these yeah. omnipotent powers and she was continually faced with a choice. And that was something that was so great to play as an actress was um, I have a choice right now. I have to just sort of take in the information that's being given to me, which was there was an abundance of information that my character was continually given. And, and you know, she's um, has a lot of decisions to make in in you know, that short span of time. Yeah. And one of them is ultimately saving a planet. And I think, you know, when I look back and watch the show, it, it gave me the opportunity to emote uh, a lot of different emotions. You know, um, I mean, obviously I'm attracted to Riker. So mm -hmm. she has kind of like a, you know, her first real crush. And yeah. it's a man that she wants, but she can't necessarily get so what happens in a situation like that in such as life itself is you become kind of Machiavellian about how you want to deal with that and how you want to try and play certain things on for size to see right. how you can get what you want um, so it what struck me as being really interesting about the character was that there were so many choices to play and um, and I really but also the language I was given great dialogue mm -hmm. when they cast me in it uh, I met met I met with about 20 of the writers and the director and it was at Paramount and I um, I had done the Wonder Years already but you know, they say. said have you done any theatre and it was really imperative that I had because they said and the reason we ask mm -hmm. is that there's not one of the act not one actor that we cast in this hasn't done theatre reason being is that the dialogue mm -hmm. is very heavy and we're going to give you lots of really extensive words uh, that you know, you'll you may or may not know the meanings too, but you know, <laughs> the most important thing is that you can pronounce the words, you know, and and that you can memorize them. More importantly, within right. sort of two to five minutes. Now, were they talking about like the techno babble, or were they talking about some of the because Star Trek dialogue, especially on Next Generation and and the others too, but gets almost Shakespearean. And it that's does. what they're talking about. That was one about. of the things that came off as "Have you done Shakespeare?" Right. And I said, ha, "Have I done Shakespeare? Come on, I play Puck." You know, um, I haven't played Lady Macbeth yet, but I intend to. Um, and yeah, I'd, I'd luckily gone to a magnet school, and I, funnily enough, didn't do Shakespeare in England. I wasn't like Sir Patrick Stewart. Yes. Yeah. You know, done the old Vic and pretty much every amazing production from Noel Coward to yeah. uh, Strindberg to whatever. So he, I hadn't done theatre as extensively as most of the actors, but I'd done enough to to nail Amanda and, and I think handle, you know, what this young woman at the time, her journey was and, and right. what she was kind of encountering. So it was really, I have nothing but fond memories, you know, looking back in it. And I feel honored to be part of it still to this day that I'm still sitting here with you talking about it. Yeah. So when Star Trek was casting yeah. and Amanda, so you, you had that very big notch in your belt and yeah. other work too. What, did they come for you or did you go in and read or what? No, I went in, I didn't read, it was a real, I mean I would totally happy, I was still auditioning at the time and I, I don't think an, an actor ever doesn't really audition. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I think you go through waves where you, you, you don't have to because you have a lot of things out and you right. can say look at my reel, but I think it's, it's something that you have to be malleable about and be mm -hmm. willing to do and especially I think it's healthy, actually, uh, to, to do that. But I didn't actually have to audition for Star Trek. Okay. But I did have to go in and prove myself. And they did have several questions for me to answer that was going to determine whether I could uh -huh. play the role. Such and, as? Uh, um, like they want, well, having done stage and uh, yeah, all that was one of it? Yeah, I read the script, and I think they wanted to get my, uh, my take on mm -hmm. where she was coming from, that she was an orphan and... Um, interested to know kind of some of the choices that I was thinking about making in order to kind of bring her alive, you know? Yeah, because this was late in the series. This was, yeah, late in the series. So the show was a mature show by yeah. then. Yeah, And they were pretty, and even John's character, you know, Q was a mature, even though he was recurring. Yeah. They had a total handle on him, too. So uh, exactly. And the I dynamic think, I, of what they were dealing with was... Look, I think anybody who, excuse me, uh, is going to participate 
in Star Trek has to be passionate. You have to have a little bit of that Trekkie sensibility in you, which I was definitely had because my brother and I had watched reruns, uh, you know, from the very first show when we were living yeah. in Taos, New Mexico. And so I was most definitely a, both a Star Wars and a uh, st- uh, okay. uh, Star Trek uh, connoisseur of sorts. And so I think they were interested to see, you know, what I knew about it and how much information I yeah I had picked up and and if I was kind of ready to get on set and and be in that uh, science fiction world which clearly I was I think so well yeah. so you talked about John's advice to you that that part of the Star Trek marquee and being uh, knowing it knowing it but as far as being now performing in it and being part of that family did that re- did were you anticipating that or did that not really hit you until John whispered in your ear to be ready well, for this. You know, it was, it was just a completely pleasurable experience. I mean, from beginning to end. And so I think I knew whilst there's just something that kind of comes to mind. There's a, there's a, there's, let's say a vibe. It's kind of a hippie term yeah. for such a uh, science fiction show. But I got a vibe on that show that was so strong and that everything seemed effortless. I mean, it was hard work and I had to really dig my heels in. And when I was given dialogue, especially in the lab, you know, I had these huge extensive, right. uh, you know, lab words that There's I There's the to, techno babble hitting you. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, yeah, you the know, stuff with were kidding with, about, you yeah. know, knowing my stuff in terms of being able to take, you know, uh, big words and, and have them come out like they're just sort of coming off the tip of the tongue. Yeah. so to speak but at that stage I was so immersed in the character and just in it in 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 mm-hmm. what the story was and 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 I felt so much part of the tribe that it it was like second nature and that was beautiful and that's rare that that happens because a lot of the time it's a little you do have to work a lot harder it isn't so organic um, and it's always nice when it is because it's just you saw you know so that was amazing. Yeah. And everybody was just so nice. And, you know, I mean, the wardrobe people, the, the, the hair people, uh, the director, uh, the sets were amazing. I remember doing that scene when I'm on top of the spaceship with John Delancey and, and I'm just looking up into the universe and looking up into all the stars. And, and, and yeah. Now, was that, like a, was that like a blue screen, green screen It was screen a blue thing? screen, but, I mean, I saw the universe. There was no doubt in my mind. I was on top of that spaceship. I was like, yeah. Yeah, there's, you know, Zeus and yeah. this star constellation. Well, and you even had everything from, like, that button-down, you know, orphan to teenager dress to that yeah. diaphanous, sexy thing with, you know, yeah. a fantasy yeah. moment there with yeah. him. I mean, you had a... That Josephine outfit, oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. With Riker in his his whole get up, <laughs> yeah. The little uh, the, yeah, I should yeah. say Gainsborough run a muck or something. Not the best period for women, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> like no waistline? Are you kidding me? Yeah, a little um, yeah, yeah. pure run a muck yeah. or something. Yeah. So good. Ooh, okay. <laughs>